Hey there, I'm Fabian and this is the second video that I'm doing on Node.js and this video is aimed at people who don't even know what web scraping is or for people that have notions of web scraping but didn't get started yet. So let's get right into it. So here's what we're going to do in this video. We are going to use the request promise library to get the HTML contents of a internet movie database page just like this one and use the famous Cheerio library to parse the HTML that we've got in order to get the details that we want, from which is going to be included the cover, the title, the ratings, and other things from this page. With this being said, let's start with a little background information for those who are not familiar with what web scraping actually is. Web scraping is the act of collecting and gathering data from different websites around the internet in the case where this data is not available from an official API of that specific website or in other forms. And I'm going to give you a quick example related to what we're actually scraping today, which is Internet Movie Database. So in this case, if you want to build, let's say, a widget that returns your visitors the summary the cover and the rating of the movie you are displaying in your website, then you would have to rely on scraping because there is no official way to do this but to create a web scraper that goes to that movie page, parses and gets you the details that you need and gets them back to you. So, With this being said, let's actually start to write some code. I'm going to open up VS Code with an empty index.js file inside of a folder which is already initiated with npm in it and right now I'm basically going to import the request promise library constant request equals require request promise and then I'm going to input the Cheerio library just like this require and then Cheerio. Alright now that we've included what we need and what we're going to use Let's make sure we actually have those installed and you can easily do this with npm just as you normally do with Node.js. And also you can do this within VS Code by clicking right here and opening up the terminal and saying npm install request promise dash dash save to save it in your package.json file. Hit enter and it will install itself and also you can do this for Cheerio as well. So I'm saying Cheerio dash dash save and hit enter. Now we made sure that the packages are installed and ready to go. So here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to create a nameless function that will automatically be executed just so that we can declare it async and use the await syntax inside of it. Here's how we can do this. Open up the parentheses and then say async and basically use the fat arrow syntax and now that we have the function we need to run it. Okay now we are set to go. The first step would be to actually save the URL of this movie into a variable or any other movie that you want from internet movie database and go back in the code and say constant movie URL and I'm going to save it in a string. The next step would be to actually make the request to this URL, which is going to be done with the help of the request promise library, which it seems that I've spelled wrong right here. It should be promise. Okay, I'm going to save the response in a constant, constant response equals to await, and then I'm going to use the request library, and then basically I'm going to input the URL, which is movie URL. And also in this case we're going to only use the movie URL parameter instead of adding other custom headers. And also if you're working along with this make sure that you have the documentation opened for request promise and also Cheerio library because it's going to come in handy. And I'm also going to open it up just so that you can confirm what I write and I'm going to say request promise and here we can go on github and check the actual code and what it does. So in order to send a basic request, just like you see here, we only need to input one parameter, which is the link of what we want to request to. 
and keep in mind that this library is actually returning promises that's why we are able to use the async await syntax let's also open up another tab with the cheerio github and if you don't already know or never heard of it cheerio is basically a core implementation of jquery designed specifically for node.js and if we scroll down just a bit we can clearly see what it does and how you can use it so with this being said let's go back to the code and start implementing and making use of the cheerio library right now that we have the response the actual html response of the movie url i'm going to initiate the cheerio library just like this and then i'm going to create a dollar sign just because this is the symbol of jquery and we're going to use it for consistency purposes and i'm going to equally to cheerio.load and here i'm going to input the response of the request and now we can start making use of cheerio in order to scrape and parse the html that we've got so how do we do this Firstly, I want to say that it's easier to open up the Internet Movie Database page, right click and inspect. This is basically going to bring up the console and we can make use of this because the HTML is already loaded right here and we can start creating the selectors that we need in order to parse what we want. And because I already can see the div which contains the title block, we can expand on it, see what we get here, expand on this either. We get the div with the ratings, which we'll use later. And then we also get the div with the title, expand on this, title wrapper, expand. And here we have the H1 class, which contains the actual title of the movie. Usually when scraping, using IDs is the proper way to go because IDs are supposed to be unique. And then you will directly use the ID selector in order to parse what you want. But of course, in most of the cases you will not handle scraping with only IDs and you would have to rely on building a CSS query selector in order to parse what you want. So in this case I'm going to use the div which has the class of title wrapper and then I'm going to access the child element which is the h1 and then basically get the text inside of it in order to get the title. And also I'm going to test this by writing document.query selector so that we can run the selector that we're building and I'm going to say div class equal title underscore wrapper and then I'm going to access the direct child which is the h1 element and I'm going to close it right now in order to test this we can easily hit enter and then if it works it will output the exact element that we've got in this case is this h1 element which contains the title of the movie and also the year of the movie let's copy now this exact query selector that we've made and go back to the code and use it just like this i'm going to create another variable called title and then i'm going to make use of the cheerio library and right here i'm going to input the exact query selector that we've made paste right here and to access the text inside of it we can use the text method in order to get it now that we at least have something to test with we can output this title and see what we have if it's working if not so i'm going to do this right here console log title and then to run this i'm going to go to the debugger and start running the code and now that it's stopped you can actually see the title of the movie which is written in Romanian because in my case I'm located in Romania and it automatically outputs the title of the movie in Romanian and now that we have some code working let's go back to the internet movie database page and start checking how we can get the poster of the movie the actual link of it right click on it and then I'm going to inspect and see what we have what I'm looking for is IDs of elements classes of elements and also other parameters of elements that are specific which can get me the image source which is actually this link so in order to get this i can already see that we have a div with the class name of poster which is pretty specific and then we can access the a element inside of it 
and then the image element inside of that. Let's try to do this by creating another query selector, hit up on the keyboard, and then I'm going to change the title wrapper to poster. Instead of getting the H1, I want to get the A element and then the direct image element. I'm going to hit enter and it's properly done. It works, we have the element with the image and also the source inside of it. Means we can use this query selector inside of the code. I'm going to copy this just like we did before and straight back right here, create another variable which is poster and then I'm going to use the Cheerio library, paste the selector right here and then instead of getting the text inside of it because there is no text, we need to get an attribute. This can be easily done by using the attribute function which returns any attribute that you want, which in our case is source. This should give us the direct link of that poster. And before we test this also, I want to show you another trick that you can use if you don't know that much of CSS query selectors, because this trick is going to help you out a lot. So let's go back to the page and let's say you want to get the rating of the movie. Let's right click on this, inspect. And as you can see, we already have a span with the item prop of rating value, which can be easily done with a custom CSS query selector. But just for the sake of it, I'm going to show you this method, which includes you right clicking and then copying the exact selector. This is going to return you the selector for this element that the browser will generate. Let's go back to the code and see what we have. And I'm going to create another variable, which is let rating value equals. And again, just like this, and I'm going to paste it right here. And then I also want to get the text inside of it. As you can see, what we've pasted is pretty long and it could have easily be done with less code than this. But since we're testing this, I just wanted to show you that it's possible to do it with just a right click. Now let's go ahead and test this out. I want to also output the poster and also the rating value. Let's go right here and start debugging this. So now here we get the results. The Wolf of Wall Street, the title, the link, which is this, and also the rating. The last thing that I wanted to mention is that this method only works if the initial server response gives you the proper HTML in order to scrape what you need from that website. If the specific website that you're trying to scrape is dynamically rendered and it renders out after the initial response, then you would need to start looking into Puppeteer, which I've already done a video on explaining how it works and how you can scrape something in less than 10 minutes. So go ahead and watch that one also if you're interested in it. So it seems that you finished the video and you're still here, so I just wanted to say congratulations. And if you liked what you saw, then you can also check my course. I have a lot of valuable information there that I know will help you if you're dealing with Node.js and web scraping. And also I have a blog on Node.js with web scraping that I post often and you can check that out also in the description. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.